ಓಂ ಜ್ಞಾನಧಿಮಂದ್ಞಾನಂಜನ ಶಲಾಖಾಯ ಚಕ್ಷುರುನ್ಮುಧೇನ ತಸ್ಮೈ ಶ್ರೀ ಗುರುವೇ ನಮ ಸೊ ದಿಸ್ ಡಿಸ್ಟ್ರಿಬ್ಯೂಷನ್ ಪಾರ್ಟ್ ಐ ಲೀವ್ ಅಪ್ ಟು ಅವರ್ ವೆರಿ ಡಿಯರ್ ಗಾಡ್ ಬ್ರದರ್ ವೈಶೇಷಿಕ ಪ್ರಭು ವೈಶೇಷಿಕ ಪ್ರಭು ಇಸ್ ಆಕ್ಚುಲಿ ಎ ವೆರಿ ವೆರಿ ಸ್ಪೆಷಲ್ ದಿಪೋರ್ಟಿ Vaisheshika Prabhu joined at the age of 17, right? 16. Wow! <laughs> Thanks for correcting me. <laughs> so, at the age of 16. And the thing is that Vaisheshika Prabhu, since the day he joined, was dead serious about uh, his commitment to Krishna Consciousness. I haven't seen him when he was 16 years old. <laughs> I met him much afterwards, and, but I saw how committed he was. I had the opportunity to get close to Vaisheshika Prabhu in 1997-98, uh, when he was in San Jose. And at that time I saw the commitment of Vaisheshika Prabhu. He was married to Mother Nirakula and he was naturally to maintain his family. He had to work. He was working. Yet, every day he used to go out and distribute to the Prabhupada's book. I must admit that I have been involved in ISKCON for over 40 years and I haven't seen this kind of commitment. Like although not living in a temple, although working outside, dealing with this external material nature, but such commitment of distributing Srila Prabhupada's books. And uh, he is the right person I consider to recognize our family business. <laughs> And he wrote a book. What is our family business? Book distribution. Distribute books. Distribute books. Distribute books. Distribute books. And how, you know, it's actually Prabhupada's own words. Prabhupada said that book distribution is the best business. Prabhupada said, don't put your money in the bank. If you have money, print books. And these books will go out. And Prabhupada gave a formula. You know what the formula is? The formula is the printing cost plus markup, BBT cost to the temples. Temples mark up doubly and sell it. Out of that, 50% is for the maintenance of the temple and the 50% is meant for building other temples. That was the thing, that formula Srila Prabhupada gave. So this is our family business. And you can see, when the book distribution goes on, there won't be any dearth of money. Money will come due to book distribution. Not only money. Along with the book distribution will come devotees. <coughs> Because if you distribute books, not just for the sake of distributing books, but properly. And in order to properly distribute books, you have to read the books. And, and Vaisheshika Prabhu had been personally practicing and that's why today we can see that when Vaisheshika Prabhu actually stepped in again uh, into the, the, the distribution network of inspiring devotees to distribute Srila Prabhupada's books how do you all feel? Awesome. due to Vaisheshika, Vaisheshika Prabhu's involvement here? Hare! Are you all going out, distributing Srila Prabhupada's books? And are you feeling ecstatic doing that? Are you getting a lot of money by doing that? <laughs> are you making devotees? And the devotees, those who are reading the books, they're spiritually, they're becoming so, uh, so astute. His Grace Vaisheshika Prabhu Ki. Yeah. <laughs> 
शील प्रभु पाद की गौर प्रेम to my exalted god brothers and god sisters who are present here today and to all the vaishnavas who are the most worshipable in the universe and very dear to krishna and thank you very maharaj very much for your warm-hearted friendship at all times it's very um <clears throat> heartfelt that after propad has left and the god brothers uh, that we've been with the god brothers god sisters all of us somehow or other came together <clears throat> by krishna's arrangement at a particular time I mean, it's astounding as maharaj is explaining the rarity of lord chaitanya's appearance in this world and so must also be the appearance of various living entities who come at the same time what to speak of those that <clears throat> become caught up in the loving network of shri chaitanya mahaprabhu what to speak of those who join shri la prapad right at the right time i mean the timing is uncanny and therefore <clears throat> knowing such and being able to call uh, these very special souls god brothers and god sisters is extremely um heartfelt and this is actually the the main solace after the spiritual master leaves is one service to one's guru and also the association of god brothers and god sisters but then of course more and more people come to the krishna consciousness movement because it's very attractive in fact <clears throat> my favorite scene in life is well, I have several now that i think of it but one of them is sitting and chanting hari krishna in public and then observing the the expressions of people who hear the holy name because there's something about well one may chant the holy name and one may appreciate it to a certain degree according to the taste one has but when one distributes the holy name deliberately distributes it by making an arrangement to be in a place where we know a lot of people are going to be and we make it as nice as possible so that people have some kind of context to appreciate what we're doing and then we repeat the holy names uh, out into the night air and when people walk by and they stop and we observe their countenances what are they thinking what's going through their minds the expression on the face is practically indescribable but it's <clears throat> it is that of a soul who has been wandering in the material universe for untold births who is suddenly coming in contact with Krishna because the holy name is not different from Krishna and there's something so mysterious about the name that captures people they hear it and you can observe how they're trying to figure out what is that sound it's exotic the sound krishna i mean if you think about the word krishna rupa goswami is describing how he's listening to the his own chanting and he's thinking i need millions more ears i need millions more tongues in order to keep expanding it and we can see people leaning in it's like a little bird or a cat when they hear a sound they kind of turn their head human beings when they hear the holy name they 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 li they're listening and they're trying to figure out what is that sound rupa goswami writes in his namashtakam that when a person who is completely blind to the truth hears the maha mantra that person can immediately get an inkling for bhakti yada baso pyudyan kalu 
Kavalita Bhavatvanto Vibhavo Drishantatvandanam Abhidishati Bhakti Pranayinim. Those who are blind, they suddenly can sense bhakti just by hearing the holy name. And being there for that, <clears throat> the, the chanters become even more enlivened to see people appreciating. We appreciate sometimes even more when somebody new comes to Krishna consciousness and we see how enlivened they are. In fact, when we go about town, as Chaitanya Mahaprabhu asked us to do, to give this gift, sometimes we have the most profound experiences that encourage our own chanting. One of them happened right here in North Carolina about five years ago when we, we all, I think it was the first time we came here to Hillsborough to inaugurate the monthly Sankatan festival. It was 108 degrees. And we all went out. Any of you here then for the 108 degrees? Yes, whatever we learned was baked in. <laughs> and one of the days that we were out and about in town, we were going door to door. In one of his purports in the seventh canto, ninth chapter of the Bhagavatam, Prabhupada speaks about how the main purpose of the members of the Krishna consciousness movement is to go door to door and teach people about Krishna consciousness. So we were doing that, because we figured Prabhupada said it, let's try. And we went to one door where uh, a young man, he must have been in his 20s, uh, answered the door with a little bit of uh, labor. And it turned out that he was handicapped, severely handicapped. I can't say what it was exactly, but he could, uh, he could barely speak, and he was contorted. And as we greeted him at the door, he seemed very eager to see us and happy to see us. And there were about <clears throat> 11 devotees, I think, at the door. So it's quite a scene. <laughs> and when uh, I showed him a book, he grabbed it. And just a, f a few seconds later, his caretaker, who was a nurse, uh, probably a professional nurse, uh, came to the door also in, in sort of an abrupt and angry mood. And she said, uh, give it back, he doesn't want it. And he protested. He said, mmm. -mm. And he held on to the book and she tried to take it from his hand, but he wouldn't let it go. And we were, we were appreciating that there's something extraordinary about this person. So we told him a little bit about the book, we explained it to him and everything like that, and he was definitely attached and wanted to have it and appreciated that we were there. And then I told him that we don't sell it, but we just ask for donations. We use it to spread love of God all over the world. If you like, you can give something. Nurse said, absolutely not. And he then insisted again, no. In whatever way he could communicate. So finally the nurse went back and brought us a donation. And then I said, I'd like to teach you a prayer that's meant to wake up love for God in your heart. And she said, the nurse said, okay, that's it. You guys gotta go. And she started to close the door, but he wouldn't let her close the door. And I said, okay, you repeat after me. Because I, I could see that there wasn't much time to do this. So then two words at a time, I said the Maha Mantra. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. But he could barely speak. He strained every sinew in his body to Hare Krishna. And then again I said, Hare Krishna. And, Hare Krishna. Krishna Krishna. And through the whole Maha Mantra, with all of his strength, he was able to move his tongue and his vocal cords to say the whole Maha Mantra. Then finally the door closed. We didn't mind then. <laughs> and I turned around and all the devotees had tears in their eyes. And as we walked away, uh, one of the devotees said to me, I wish I had that much desire to chant Hare Krishna. So this giving of Krishna consciousness to others, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said 
is spiritual mathematics. In the material world, one may think the more I hoard what I have, the, the wealthier I, I am, the more assets I can accumulate. But Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's method is different. It's to distribute out of a goodwill for the people of the world, to think, how can I do the highest good for the people in the world? And then to, to base one's lifestyle on giving to as many people as possible. And then the more that one gives, the, the, the more that one has capacity to take Krishna consciousness, the more one has capacity to appreciate Krishna consciousness. One's appreciating capacity increases. In the poetical language of Kaviraj Goswami, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and his associates plundered the storehouse of love of Godhead and ate and distributed its contents. And the more they did that, the more the contents increased. I've always appreciated that. In fact, the word in Bengali is lute, which sounds like looting. <laughs> Same thing, right? And we've seen some of us uh, in America at various times when a city erupts into uh, riots and violence, oftentimes people loot. They'll start smashing in windows and indiscriminately carrying away anything they can get their hands on and just taking it. And Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and his associates are described like um, mad people. They became so intoxicated by the process of Krishna consciousness, all they could think of was how to distribute to his other, others as much as possible. And they, they gave it out, uh, not caring who was a fit candidate, who was an unfit candidate, what was a good time or wasn't, what wasn't a good time. That's spontaneous. It's, it's a lot of, there's, a, there's complete samadhi in that. If you, if you become absorbed in that mood of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and his associates, just go everywhere and give everyone the opportunity to somehow or other connect to the holy names, to transcendental literatures. Prabhupada really liked transcendental literatures. He spent so much time, his spiritual master told him that if you ever get money, print books. Prabhupada said, I could understand. It came from my spiritual master's mouth that he, had, he wanted these books. So he dedicated himself to printing them in Vrindavan. He actually, one of the <clears throat> great secrets of the Krishna consciousness movement is that Prabhupada's first set of Bhagavatams arrived in America a year before he did. Because Prabhupada was distributing books in India and he took 16 sets to the Library of Congress, American institution, which was situated there in Delhi and they bought those 16 sets and they distributed them to various places, various branches around the world. So one of those sets went to the New York Public Library. Brahmananda told me that when Prabhupada first got to America, he went to that New York Public Library and he found his set of books there. And Brahmananda said that was Prabhupada's entertainment to go there and see his books in the library. As, as Maharaj was saying, he came here with no money. But actually, I found out that when he stepped off the boat, he had $20, because he sold a set of his books to the captain. Before he, got there. Sure. Before he set foot on <laughs> And so he gave this delivery system. He did it himself in India. And then when he came to America for the first year, he supported himself by distributing the books that he had brought with him. And so today, uh, just on the way here, we, we uh, stopped to distribute books at a, at a little nondescript uh, mall by the side of the road. And every time that one does this, there's an exhilaration because you don't know what's going to happen. You do know that Prabhupada did it. He didn't know what was going to happen. It's like catching a Jaladuta when you walk out the door. Everyone... Everyone should try to find a Jaladuta to catch on a regular basis. To take that risk. I'm getting on the boat. I'm going, I'm going to go out no matter what. Uh, and I'll just try. I mean, Prabhupada was just following the order of his spiritual master. He said, just try. So it felt like that today. We had our little Jaladuta, that Murano that we drive around. <laughs> Nissan Murano. <laughs> we'll call it our Jaladuta now. And so we, I told... Aditya Narayan Prabhu, if we could just find a little place on the way here, 
with uh, some shops that we could stop there and meet some people and distribute some books because I've been finding that all over America there are these little uh, malls. They're, they're actually, I hate to call it a mall because you think of a big thing. There's just like about 10 or 20 shops in a row. Uh, some of them are nail salons. I think that's what's keeping the American economy going. <laughs> Is nail polish. There's, there's millions of them, and then bars. People consume a lot of, a lot of alcohol, and then there's all kinds of barber shops. People have to cut their hair, and little restaurants of all kinds. People have to eat, and they just uh, start a little business, nondescript, non-corporate, and so we we just go and walk around those places and meet the people. So here's what happened today. We 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 just found a little mall, and we walked up, and there was. Uh, we saw some evidence that there were some Korean people there, so we also had Korean books with us. Wow. So the first place, the, f the first place we went into, was a um, actually I think it was, yeah it was a Korean restaurant, and the and but it was being uh, run by Mexican workers, <laughs> and they were very interested, but the. The owner of the restaurant was very cruel, and she was very like, no, go away. And these other very sweet people, they wanted to keep a book. Actually, one of them did, and so we went on to the next place, and that was a barber shop. So we went into the barber shop. It was uh, an African American barber shop. Everyone in there was African American. They were very welcoming when we bu busted into their shop, and they just looked like we. And we just started talking to him. So the guy was cutting the person's hair. And at the same time, I was telling him about the Bhagavad Gita. <laughs> and the guy that was in the chair was just going, kind of like, okay. <laughs> and, and as I was explaining to the guy, I could see that he was, he was a ripe fruit. We look for the ripe fruits. We go out and Prabhupada said, go out and collect up the fortunate. So he was, he was just, he had a good heart. So he, he finished, the guy got up, he walked out. He said, all right, let me look at it. He goes through the book, and he bought a Bhagavad Gita, put it in his shop. So and then we went up and down, and the next one was a dance studio, and they were a bunch of kids in there, and their teachers learning how to dance, and I told them the whole thing about Lord Chaitanya came here. Um, <laughs> what's that? Yeah. And, and we talked about the Bhagavad Gita, and I asked for donation. They didn't have any money. And everyone was searching in their pockets. And they had leotards on. They didn't have any money. So I gave them the Bhagavad Gita. And I asked them to chant the Maha Mantra. So at first, uh, just the, the girl who was holding the book said the Maha Mantra. And she was looking around like, how come you guys aren't chanting? The rest of the, there was 10 other wow. students in there. So then gradually, by the time we got to Hari Rama, Hari Rama, everyone was chanting inside. So we left that place and we felt satisfied that Chaitanya Mahaprabhu had visited that place. After all, Prabhupada wrote when he was in Vrindavan, in his Vrindavane Bhajan, that everyone's sitting in their homes and they're looking down the road thinking, when are Nitai and Gaur going to come and save me? That's what they're thinking inside there. And so uh, then the devotees were watching and they were thinking, how come you're giving away, away books for free? Big Bhagavad Gita. And so the next place we went, uh, I just poked my head in the door, and I said, um, the guy took one look at me, and he goes, oh yeah, I, I love this stuff. <laughs> and he came right out. He was the owner of the restaurant. He said, he told us he had three principles life, in life. Always be present. Uh, never have any expectations. What was the third one? There was some other principle that he lived by. He was very spiritual, and he, an American guy who was, uh, had been in the military, now he's, and now he was searching for spiritual life. Took the Bhagavad Gita and he gave $20 uh, immediately, just very effusive and spontaneous that he wanted to take that. And just, uh, we were only there for half an hour, but we were f feeling so satisfied, so happy. When I walked in the door here, um, Mataji asked me, you know, how are you? And I said, I'm really happy. <laughs> And I really meant it. I wasn't just saying that. Because I, I, nothing can make you as happy as going out and distributing Christian consciousness to others. You may have all kinds of problems. Uh, 
not may, you do have all kinds of problems. <laughs> you take that for granted. But when you go out and try to give and, and distribute, then your appreciation for the process of Christian consciousness becomes spontaneous. You don't have to intellectualize the process. You just become happy by giving out. And this is Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Just indiscriminately go everywhere. It doesn't matter where. Just uh, bring people these gifts. You can bring books. You can bring prasadam. You can bring the holy name. And arrange ways to give it to other people. And the more you give it out, the more it grows in your life. This is the great formula for success in Christian consciousness. And of course, as Maharaj explained, you have to also give it to yourself. It's the first time we met Prabhupada in 1973 in San Francisco, the Sankirtan party was there, and the temple president uh, was pointing out how many books the devotees were doing, and Prabhupada said, I've not written these books just for selling. I've written them, he said, you must also read these books, because I want you to read them to become pure devotees and go back home, back to Godhead. So, uh, anyone can participate in the Christian consciousness movement, we've seen uh, that it's such a simple thing to uh, find out the great gift of the Srimad Bhagavatam, the Bhagavad Gita, the Holy Name, Prashadam, and then enhance it by giving it to others. As I, I've written in the book, I studied uh, Jumunas encyclopedic cookbook called <coughs> Lord Krishna's Cuisine. And in the section on rice, I found out a, a very important philosophical point. And that is, <clears throat> when you mix rice, anybody like rice? Yes. And you mix beans, anybody like dal? When you put them together, she says, you get 42% more nutrition. There's a synergy between the two. So similarly, hearing and chanting is essential, as essential <coughs> as rice. And distributing Krishna consciousness is also essential. But when you put the two together, you get 42% more <laughs> sadhana power. <clears throat> the two things put together. Distributing, and then you'll become, as Srimad Bhagavatam says, Shushu Shro Shradhana Sya Vasudeva Kataruchi Syan Mahatseveya Vipra Punya Tirta Nishevana. By serving the great souls, one develops an affinity for hearing about Krishna consciousness. And I see even new people who, who come into our congregations and we invite them uh, immediately to take up the process of hearing chanting and going out to distribute Krishna consciousness. In fact, one of our um, longest standing devotees at ISV is uh, a devotee named Ramananda Saka Prabhu. And I remember the first day he walked in the temple and uh, he was just trying to figure out, like, you know, what is this place? And we said, we're all going on Sankirtan. He said, what's that? I said, why don't you come and you'll find out. So we went out and he was helping us at a book table. And we were all getting busy talking to people. And then somebody else came along and was interested in a book. And I said, show him. And so he picked up a Sri Upanishad. And I heard him say to the people, I've heard this is a good book. <laughs> And the people, the people bought the book. And I, then I realized, you know, anybody can do this if you just get caught up in the Sankirtan movement and you go out. Then I've seen other devotees come and they become inspired by distributing. They say, well, what's really in these books? Maybe I should read them myself. And I said, yeah, that's a good idea. If you do the two things together, it makes a complete meal. So Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was... Um, is described, Mayamragam Dayateipsitaman Vadavad, that he chased after uh, people, that they were, people are, in this verse, actually it has three meanings, but one of them is that the people, Mrigam, they're like, in the age of Kali Yuga, people are like animal like in Kali Yuga, <clears throat> because they've, they've forgotten everything, they have no training in anything. So he chased after these animal-like people to give them mercy, give them special mercy. And those who follow in the footsteps of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu will also see for themselves how the internal energy works and always be enlivened in the practice of Christian consciousness. 
And this is an important way to test your own mantras. Just as in previous ages, we hear in the Srimad Bhagavatam, there were brahmanas that were so expert at chanting mantras that an animal would be sacrificed and then by the proper pronunciation of the mantra, the animal would be revived, brought back to life. Is that correct, Mukundadatta Prabhu? <laughs> Confirmed by our pundit. <laughs> so in a similar way, people in this age of Kali are like animals. And not only that, their souls have been killed by one layer after another of materialistic dogma. And practically they're dead. It's like called Atmaha. So now you can take out your mantra and test it on these animals who have already been killed by material nature and watch them come back to life. And then you know by distributing the mantra, by giving it to other people, once you give them mantra, you can even just hand them the mantra in written form, like these books. The mantras are all written down. Say, here, take this. And then you watch them revive as they take the mantras themselves. And this way you test the mantra. And you say, yes, it works. It works on, on those who have been killed by the process of material energy and they come back to life. So why wouldn't it work for me? Oftentimes, in fact, this is part of our regular routine. When we go out to distribute books and prasadam, we also ask people to chant the holy name. As I just mentioned, that whole dance studio chanted. So we hand people a card with the mantra on it, and we'll say, do you believe in the power of prayer? Do you all believe in it? Yes. 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 So then we say, okay, I'm going to teach you to do this prayer, which is meant to wake up love for God in your heart. And it's a little hard to pronounce, so I'm going to say it once, and you can repeat. Are you ready? Yes. 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 So then... Today, we, we, um, this one lady, I said, are you ready? And she goes, okay. And I said, Hare Krishna. She said, Hare Krishna. And then I, was about th I said, Hare Krishna. And I said, wait a minute. What's in this? <laughs> What's in this mantra? <laughs> and so, not very often, but every once in a while, we're on the street, and we're, okay, I'll teach you this prayer. And then we'll say, are you ready? And one person, there's two people together. Yeah, are you ready? Yes. Hare Krishna. And the other guy goes, Bob, don't do it. <laughs> He grabs his arm, don't do that. And I go, why? What's the matter? He goes, you don't know what's going to happen. <laughs> and then the distributor starts thinking, yeah, I don't know what's going to happen either. If I keep chanting this mantra, it's like a, it's a heavy incantation that takes you back to the spiritual world. You keep chanting, and there will be airplanes showing up to take you back to Godhead. It, it's a heavy mantra, but you realize it when you give it out to other people. You can't see the full the full capacity until you distribute. And the more you do that, the more it actually becomes visible in your life. There's also a mercy factor because it's, it's such a, uh, an important activity. Krishna says in the Bhagavad Gita, tasman manusheshu, that out of all the humans, and actually the humans are the most dear to Krishna. He says this to Uddhava in the 11th canto of Srimad Bhagavatam. He likes humans the best because they have the most capacity for becoming Krishna consciousness. Because we're right in the middle. We're not big demigods and we're not in hell. And we're right here in the middle of the universe. And you know, we just we only have like 70 to 100 years, maybe less, in order to, to, to make something. And he just likes us. He likes human, human beings. So, what was I just saying? I got distracted. Like, yeah, but before that? You don't know what's in the mantra. Yeah, but I had a really nice point. <laughs> and I interrupted myself because I was... I was scared to chant. Yeah. Anyway, maybe it'll come back. In any case, uh, human beings... It just flew away. <laughs> so... It's good. There's like reflections early. <laughs> You have to revive me. I'm like a dead animal. Yeah, keep going back. Bob, don't do it. Yeah, not your testament, Manish, Manish, I was saying that 
Krishna likes humans anyway. What to speak if you're a human and you distribute Krishna consciousness? And that's a big thing. He already likes humans out of all the 8 million thousand, 8 million 400 thousand species of life. That's pretty good. Just walk around being, hey, I'm a human. <laughs> Krishna likes me. But then if you're a human and you take up distributing Bhagavad Gita, just that, I mean, you, what, how could you be more blessed? Just, then you become a uh, happy human, Sukhinara. So it, it, it's a blessed activity to organize your life around this principle of giving. Uh, keep the, the implements, the holy name, the, the transcendental literatures, the prasadam, keep it at, at arm's reach so you can always be giving to people. Even just, just as we were at the stoplight, there was this hom homeless person, apparently homeless, maybe she lives in a palace, we don't know, but she's <laughs> collecting at this, and she has to sit there. I feel sorry for her, it's a terrible job, you have to sit there and look depressed all day. Like, I don't have anything. And so we, we just rolled down the window and said, excuse me, here, we got something for you. It was a lollipop and a book. And we gave it to her, and the devotees in the car got so excited. Ratnarati comes going, she's reading it, she's reading it. <laughs> We're driving away, and we felt happy. You know, that there's this person, She's got a dead-end job for sure. And we just gave her something. And we felt happy, she felt happy, the universe was a better place. In, in just, in, in 10 seconds flat. So this is real life. Real life means to take advantage of the gifts we've been given and to give them out as profusely as possible. Even if you don't think you're very good at it, just try and Lord Chaitanya will assist you. And then you'll also go back to Godhead. Hare Krishna. That's a hard act to follow. Oma jnana timiranta sik nana jnana shalakaya chakshira nita nina tasmai shiri. First of all, I would like to offer my obeisances unto my esteemed brother god brothers, His Holiness Bhakti Chaudhu Swami and His Grace Vaisheshika Prabhu, Drishti Prabhu, um, all, of, all of the elders in this assembly. And I also want to offer my obeisances to every word that they just said. Because, I, as I said, it's not easy to, easy to really approach their level. <clears throat> Actually, the topic that I was requested to speak about is not separate from what Maharaj spoke about and also what Vaisheshika spoke about. When I was very young, somehow or other, I came in contact with Krishna consciousness because I grew up very close to the temple. And <clears throat> I remember at some point, before I was 15, I had a mantra card in my possession. And it was such a treasured possession of mine. Because at that time I had begun to chant Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Rama Rama. Rama, Rama, Hare, Hare. And the, the caption, I mean, in my mind's eye, I can still see every detail of this card. <clears throat> it was orange, it was yellow and red, and had the Maha Mantra and a small picture of Gopal Krishna. And the caption said, please chant this mantra and your life will be sublime. So I tried it. <clears throat> and one day I was, I was a student, I was in school. And I was walking home from the library one day, and I was chanting this mantra all the way home, because I couldn't stop it. I, I had read some, some of Prabhupada's books, and I understood that, that, that this mantra had special potency, like he's just been saying. And I just became so exhilarated with this understanding that after so many millions of births, like he said, I was one of those animals that was revived by the mantra. And <clears throat> we know that we, we have some time to generally perfect our chanting, but I'm still doing it 40 years later, so I must have done something right. But anyway, this is, this is the manifestation of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's mercy, that this mantra is available to all of us. And it's a manifestation of Srila Prabhupada's mercy as well, his divine grace, Srila Prabhupada. 
And we have the responsibility to give this mantra to everyone that we meet. Jare dekhe tare kaha Krishna upadesh ityadi. So, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu especially said those born in India have to do this. And we, if we take this Maha Mantra into our heart and if we focus on the real goal, keep the goal in mind, just like we hear from the Rig Veda, Om Tad Vishnu Paramam Param Sada Pashyanti Surayaha Divi Vachakshura Tatam Tad Vipraso Vipanyavo Jagravam Sasanindade Vishnu Paramam Padam. Or as we, we heard, those who attended the Sadhu Sangha retreat, they had this Bhagavatam verse with the arrow, which is actually coming from Kato Upanishad. Uh, I'm not sure if Govindacharan realizes that or not. But the idea is that we are the arrow and the bow is this mantra. And we should, we should shoot for the highest lakshya, for the highest target is Radha Krishna, Raja Prema which Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was giving out for free in this age. Ananda lidamaya vigrahaya hema bhita vyachavi sundaraya tasmai maha prema rasa pradaya Chaitanya chandraya namonamaste. His pastimes are just filled with bliss. His, his whole, he is the embodiment of blissful pastimes. He is the complexion of molten gold. His his beauty is inestimable. It's, it's like nothing, incomparable beauty. And uh, he's just giving away this, this Vraja Prem in the midst of Kali Yuga. If we simply take it and try to hold on to this mantra within our hearts, keep it in our ears and, and all the way into our hearts, then we can very easily go back to God at even in one lifetime. Um, and so we can imagine that if, if Shishupal was delivered through enviously chanting, we mentioned this, then what will happen to somebody who is not only trying to strive to become a devotee by chanting seriously, but is engaging many, many other people in doing the same thing as he was describing. Jare de ke kaha, whoever you see, this is our responsibility because we have we have interactions with other human beings every day, many of them. What is the result of that interaction? Are you being elevated by the interaction? Or are you being degraded by it? Is the other person being elevated? Or are you degrading them? Are you depriving them of the chance? You see, human life is just a short opportunity and it's definitely not going to last. So while we're here, we, we can take advantage of this great process by studying Srila Prabhupada's books and understanding what is the real glory of this simple process that Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is giving us, especially as he's been describing so nicely in the form of Sankirtana. Samyak Kirtan means all together, so many of us. One of Srila Prabhupada's many, many glories, it's really hard to limit them, one of the one of the prominent, I, I think it's prominent. Tamal Krishna Goswami wrote in his uh, Living Theology of Krishna Bhakti about this. That Srila Prabhupada's characteristic was that he expanded the definition of kirtan. But generally, when we hear the word kirtan, what do we think of? We think of Mardanga and Kartal and a mandali of devotees sitting and singing, and that's kirtan. But in Srila Prabhupada's view, to distribute books about Krishna consciousness is also kirtan. His own spiritual master, Bhaktisiddhanta Saraswati Thakur, also considered the members of the Gaudiamat, and by extension we can understand that means all the members of ISKCON, to be the mridangas, living mridangas in that kirtan. He called them living mridangas. And the kirtan is in, in, every, in every way to, we, we should emanate uh, Krishna consciousness the way that Vaisheshika does, for example. He really is an extraordinary person. I have to concur with Bhakti Chagra Swami. I, I remember when I first joined ISKCON, of course, I was just a bewildered kid. I'm still bewildered, even though I have no excuse for it anymore. <laughs> but... Uh, 
I remember this is on the Radha Damodar traveling Sankirtana party. And every morning at Mangalarati, Vaisheshika Prabhu could not go three verses or four verses maximum before he just started wildly dancing in abandon with both knees raised high, both arms raised high, and a blissful smile on his face. <laughs> and actually there were many others on that party who did the same thing. Uh, that kind of enthusiasm is very infectious. Um, so that, that kind of commitment to the Holy Name is, is, is what sustains us in Krishna consciousness. It's like breathing. And it, we can read all of Srila Prabhupada's books, but if our hearts remain infected with the disease of envy, then we can't really get the real benefit from that. They, they, as he said, they have to go together like, like rice and dal. So, the enthusiasm generated, the, the urge to turn towards God that is within our hearts, those who are pious or theistic, that is nourished by this chanting of the Holy Name. And the books give the understanding by which we can direct that process. But the, the essential process is just that simple. There's nothing other than chanting. You know, the famous, so many famous verses. So this is the great process that we have to take deeply within ourselves, and this is the, this is the same process we have to share with everyone we meet. And if we do that, then it's sure that Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, through Srila Prabhupada, and all of their representatives, they, we will be so deeply blessed, and the whole world can become auspicious. This is what I think of whenever I remember this verse from the fifth canto of Srimad Bhagavatam. It's a verse that's actually written over the doorway of the famous Krishna Janma Bhumi temple in uh, Mathura. Swasti astu vishvasya khala prasidatam jhayantu bhutani shivam mithodhya manashabhadram bhajatarad hokshaje aveshyatam no matirapya haitaki. He prays that <coughs> may the whole universe be auspicious, and may all the demons be pacified. May all living entities think of each other's welfare, and, uh, and uh, may our minds become auspicious by practicing bhakti yoga unto the transcendental Lord, and may we enter more and more deeply into this process. This is such an, such an exalted prayer. So, <clears throat> The chanting of the Holy Name is really the, the essential thing in this day and age, in the, in the age of Kali, we, we, we know that. And my god sister Govinda Dasi told me something very interesting uh, when she was last in Vrindavan. She told me that in 1968 they were driving in a car with Srila Prabhupada um, in, I think it was in Montreal, maybe it was in Toronto, I don't remember. And she, Prabhupada was talking to her and so whoever the other devotees were. And Srila Prabhupada mentioned that there will be large halls that are rented and people, young Indian householders in, in particular, he said, they will come and pay admission to join in our kirtan in these halls. And this is this is something I actually saw happen. <laughs> well, it's happening many places now, actually. I was thinking of that when we were at this Sadhu Sangha. So many, so many people coming now to, to chant the Holy Name because they understand the, the, great, uh, the great fortune of this opportunity. So, <clears throat> Srila Prabhupada gave many, many instructions on kirtan. He gave not only technical, musical instructions on kirtan, those are also there. We don't see that they're followed so much, but they are there. Um, but the main thing is this, this process of purification of the hridroga, the heart disease that we all have. So much black stuff in our hearts that has to come out. And it, it only comes out through receptive chanting, offenseless chanting. Everything that we do in Krishna consciousness is only 
for this one simple purpose of chanting Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama. The process is very simple. Uh, simple doesn't always mean easy, <laughs> because, you know, we, we, we were infected, we were diseased condition. <clears throat> Rupa Goswami in his Upadesh Amrita gives the nice analogy of jaundice. Anyone ever had jaundice? <laughs> When you're jaundiced, what happens? Your, your eyes turn yellow, everything turns yellow. You're weak. If you eat sugar, what does it taste like? Kerala. <laughs> <laughs> so, <clears throat> but the best cure, Srila Rupa Goswami writes, is, uh, for jaundice is to just take it. Just eat the sugar. His holy name is the most sweet of all sweet things. Madhuram Madhure Piopi. And it is the most auspicious of all auspicious things. And it, we, we become freed from our disease. I mentioned the other day, we, Mukta Bandha and Paramvrajet. These two things happen. We become not only free of our disease, but we're given a special station in Goloka Prema by divine grace, through the agency of this holy name, as taught by Srila Prabhupada. So, <clears throat> we can, we can, uh, the, I'll share, I'll end now, but I'll just share one very wonderful verse from Srila Rupa Goswami's Padyavali. It's an anonymous verse. Nobody knows who wrote it, but it's very, very old. Because even when Rupa Goswami included it in his anthology 500 years ago, he considered this to be an ancient verse. He says, Kalyananam Nithanam, Kalimalamatanam. Pavanam, Pavananam. That means of all the auspicious things, this holy name is the essence. It is the most, it is the, it is the auspiciousness of anything auspicious. And <clears throat> it is able to destroy all the ills of the Kali Yuga. Kali Malamathanam. Pavanam, Pavananam. Of all purifying things, it is the purity. You see? And then he says, <clears throat> uh, That means, for somebody who's trying to, for, for someone who's trying for liberation, this holy name is all the provision that you need. You don't need anything else. Patean means something you, you put in your bag to take on the airplane, for example, or when you're traveling. See, this holy name is everything. Patean yan mamuksho, sapari para para pratiye. And for attaining a parapara prati, a, a, a transcendental station in, like I said, Goloka Vrindavan, you only need this. <clears throat> it's declared to be this by the great sages. Then he says, Kavivaravachatam uh, jivanam sajananam. It is the end of all beautiful poetic descriptions because no matter how good of a poet you are, even if you're Kalidas, or in here in English we have Shakespeare, that you won't find anything more suitable to be glorified than this holy name because of all these things that we've already described. Bijam dharma drumasya. It is the root of the tree of dharma. Dharma is the root of all good things, but this, this is the seed of that tree, the holy name. It is the effective ingredient, so to speak, whether you're fond of karma or gyan, and in this material world, those are the only two options. It is the, it is the active ingredient in either one of them. So, Pijam Tanamantramasya Prabhavatu Bhavatam Bhutaye Krishna Nama. May that holy name of Krishna confer auspiciousness on all of you. This is Rukko Swami's blessing, and we've all been given this blessing by the grace of Srila Prabhupada. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. We have several sets of Srimad Bhagavatams, so we have a policy that uh, no book may be left behind. And all these uh, Bhagavatam sets. If you don't have a Bhagavatam set, you come up to Dita Narayan just after, well, he'll give you one. There's some insignificant um, 
donation that you can give to him. He'll tell you what it is. But don't don't even consider that. It's it's not it's not relevant to the to the conversation. Take the Bhagavatams, and uh, also it's possible because Maharaj is here. He he might sign them for you, the Bhagavatams, and also Maharaj's book is on the other side, which is it will melt your heart, uh, telling the story of how he met Prabhupada and all these intimate pastimes of his divine grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada, in our very own uh, world treasure of Viscon, uh, His Holiness Bhakti True Swami. Uh, so that is available. So um, everything must go. No no book left here, please. So here's a teaching to Ryan. If you don't have a Bhagavatam set, you know who you are. Come get one. <laughs> The, the set, and if you already have one, then um, since people nowadays have many rooms in their house, you should have one in every house. This is the best way to to adjust the vastu in your home, because Vishnu Chakravarti Thakur says the Srimad Bhagavatam is non different from Goloka Vrindavan. So if you looked at your astrological chart lately, you'll find there are a lot of ups and downs. Everyone has them. Don't worry. But if you put Goloka Vrindavan in, then don't worry either. There's no problem. So we recommend every uh, every child in the house should have a full set of Bhagavatams for the, him or herself. And every room should have one as well. So if you already have one, you come get another one. If you don't have one, get, run up here to the front immediately. And Aditya and Narayan Prabhu will take care of you. Right, Aditya? Yeah. Okay, and will you ask Maharaj personally if you'll sign them? Because that, that makes it irresistible. And then... Yeah, I mean, you have the rarest of rare things. The Srimad Bhagavatam signed by His Holiness Bhakti True Swami. Is that okay, Maharaj? Yeah. I just want to add something quickly. When I, I got this book, Bhakti Charaswami's book, and I read the entire book in one sitting. It's that, it's that entrancing. It's very, very nice. So we actually have a lot of nectar here. First of all, we would like to thank all the three Vaishnavas for, for the wonderful we have a class. Our teacher Swami Maharaj actually spoke on the special, precious gift that Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was giving all of us. And then his uh, great Vaishya Shekhar Prabhu spoke of like how we actually received the gift by giving it out and His Grace Mukunda Prabhu actually spoke of the importance of the Holy Name. So let's thank all the three wonderful <laughs> Krishna Maharaj, uh, thank you for the wonderful class. <laughs> Maharaj, you explained the difference between uh, Vaikuntha and uh, Vrindavan. You said uh, there is this relationship of neutrality and uh, servitorship in Vaikuntha and the rest of the three are in the Vrindavan. <clears throat> so Maharaj, actually that generated few questions in my mind that uh, when we, and Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, uh, he exhibited this uh, topmost bhav, uh, the conjugal love in Parkiyaras. And uh, so when the conditioned souls in Kali Yuga, when they get an opportunity to chant this uh, Hare Krishna mantra, uh, and the ones who uh, attain perfection in this process, uh, so do they uh, directly get a chance to go back to Golok Vrindavan and attain one of these three relationships, uh, the friendship, parental or conjugal. And then also uh, I have been hearing about the Swarup, like every soul has a Swarup. So if, they, if every soul has a Swarup uh, and, uh, and the one who has perfected this process, does he directly 
get into just these three relationships or does it still has some kind of a swarup yeah very nice question thank you very much uh do you remember that when lakshmi devi approached narayan to have access to the heart of rasalila then narayan said that you have to follow one of the residents of vrindavan so that is the means actually to enter into vrindavan there are two types of bhakti vaidhi bhakti and raganuga bhakti vaidhi bhakti is means the devotional service following the rules and regulations given in the scriptures vidhi rules and regulations by following rules and regulations or vaidhi bhakti one actually gets access to vaikuntha when one achieves perfection through vaidhi bhakti he wants to he goes to vaikuntha but the way to enter into vrindavan is actually raganuga bhakti the meaning of that's what actually narayan told that you see the meaning of the raganuga raga means love intense loving emotion and the residence of vrindavan has that intense love for krishna as i mentioned due to that love their love is so intense so deep that they forget that krishna is the supreme personality of god and all they feel is their love for krishna so the residents of vrindavan therefore are considered to be ragatmika bhaktas the residents of vrindavan are ragatmika bhaktas. There's those who have just intense love for Krishna, and anuga means to follow. So when one follows one of the ragatmika bhaktas, that becomes raganuga bhakti. Mm. Now, by following raganuga bhakti, or by following the process of raganuga bhakti, one gets access to Vrindavan. That actually takes him to Vrindavan. but there is one consideration again that comes in that rupagopta rupagoswami is saying that one must render devotional service following by the bhakti otherwise it will simply create a, create a disturbance shruti smriti puranaadi pancharatra vidhin bina oikanti ki hare bhakti utpatai vakalpate if one renders devotional service no matter how intense how sincere it is if it is executed without following the rules and regulations given by the shruti smriti puran etc these scriptures will simply create a disturbance utpati eva kalpati so You see, the point is, Raganuga bhakti is the way to go to Vrindavan, but Bhaidi bhakti must be followed. Like, if we don't follow Bhaidi bhakti, then it will simply create a disturbance. Mm-hmm. Now, Sri Caitanya Mahaprabhu actually harmonized these two concepts, appearing as Sri Caitanya Mahaprabhu. the way to serve chaitanya mahaprabhu is different hmm, from serving krishna krishna is served by you know sort of upachar you know like rendering service through you know utilizing different ingredients for worship krishna is worshiped that's the way he is served but the service to chaitanya mahaprabhu according to the scriptures yagai sankirtan aprayesh the bithi that has been given in the scriptures to serve sri chaitanya mahaprabhu is to a very special kind of yagya called sankirtan yagya 
सो चैतन्य महाप्रभु इज सर्व थ्रू चैतन्य थ्रू संकीर्तन दैट इज द विधि यू आर फॉलोइंग द विधि मार्ग इज सर्विंग चैतन्य महाप्रभु थ्रू संकीर्तन बट नाउ लेट एस कंसिडर हु इज चैतन्य महाप्रभु Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is Krishna in the mood of Shrimati Radha Rani. So when you are following Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, who are you following? Radha. Shrimati Radha Rani, who is the greatest of all the Ragatmika Bhaktas. So you see, following Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is automatically being transformed into following Shrimati Radha Rani, or is automatically being transformed into Raga Nuga Bhakti, Rag Anuga. and as a result of that as you are asking like you know by following shri chaitanya mahaprabhu or following the process of sankirtan whether one will eventually go to vrindavan yes that is the way to go to vrindavan how because when we serve shri chaitanya mahaprabhu and when we achieve perfection then who do we see in place of chaitanya mahaprabhu we see radha krishna just as ramananda rai saw the perfection of serving shri chaitanya mahaprabhu is in seeing a revelation of himself as radha krishna the process of sankirtan is actually taking us in this way to radha krishna and when you are seeing radha krishna where are you you are in vrindavan so this is the way that shri chaitanya mahaprabhu actually gave like just we have to simply follow shri chaitanya mahaprabhu and automatically this vaidhi bhakti of serving shri chaitanya mahaprabhu will become transformed into raganuga bhakti which will give us access to vrindavan and yes when you are in vrindavan you see ultimately what will be our mellow is entirely up to krishna spiritual life means depend upon krishna material life means demand the spiritual life is to depend whatever krishna wants if krishna wants me to go to hell i'll go to hell that is the mood of a devotee if krishna wants me to whatever mellow krishna wants to reward me award me i'm happy with that and as you are asking the swarup that becomes the swarup the swarup of a living entity is his relationship with krishna and in vrindavan not only these three mellows are there all five mellows are there in his perfection santarash is there dasya is there sakha is there vatsalya is there and madhur is there but the predominating factor is the madhur conjugal in parokia and all the other mellows are actually supporting that ultimate consideration is krishna's loving relationship with shrimati radharani mm. so that is right now thank you so if somebody was uh, ready to take the books but they are not interested to you know buy something so shall i go ahead and distribute uh, for free to the people so that does it give the real value of the book to the you know uh, i felt it you know let's go the book to them krishna will bless them and one day they will come back Krishna says in the Bhagavad Gita <clears throat> that we should not disclose this knowledge to those who are not devoted or austere. So what are we to do? How do we know people are devoted or austere? Well, 
this this is a like on a battlefield when you're running around. It's called triage. You have to find people that you can save that are savable right away, and you have to do it quickly too. It's it's a it's a dire situation, and there's not much time. So we have to go around and find people and and give them as much pour in as much mercy as possible, as quickly as possible. So. In distributing books, you're specifically asking about that, <clears throat> what we do is we offer the, we explain the book to people in an attractive way that it will appeal to their mind and uh, their heart. And then we, at the end, we ask them for a donation. And the reason we ask for a donation, and I'll just tell you what I tell people, because it explains it. Because I tell them exactly why we ask for a donation. And everyone that has, was out with me today will verify this is what I tell people. I hand the, I hand them I tell them that we don't sell this book like in a bookstore. We just ask for a donation. We don't need the money. The only reason we ask is when you give something in return for spiritual knowledge, it connects you to the previous teachers who have passed it down over many generations and allows you to enter deeply within the knowledge. And when we tell them that, they understand. In fact, one person today I told and and you know she was hesitating. I said, it's like a penance. You do some penance, and this is your penance, and then you'll be able to understand the book. So then there's sometimes people don't have money. Money's just a token anyway. It's a piece of paper. But it means something to them, so we accept it. And we give it to Krishna, because then they get the benefit. And then they're able to read the book. But if they can't give a donation, if they pay attention, we also give it to them. At least I do. Because when I show them the book and they pay attention, they paid something. In fact, I tell people that sometimes they feel guilty. They say, I don't have anything. I can't give anything. I said, listen, you just gave your valuable time. That's even more valuable than money. And you gave your time. I really appreciate it. In fact, a lot of times I say that to people. They walk away and then find some money and come back and give it to me. I so appreciate it. But Prabhupada asked us to, to get something in return for the books. But we also have to know the art of how to leave people with a good impression so that every person you meet, you touch in the appropriate way so they walk away feeling that I just met the nicest person in the world and that, and that I really appreciate what they're doing and I don't know what's in this book, but because I like that person, I'm going to read this book. So you have to be really nice to people and you have to treat them like that they're your best friend and, and you have to engage in a loving exchange by, by pouring out your heart to them and accepting what they give in return. Something like that. Hare Krishna. Tell, yes. story, tell a story about the lighter. Oh yeah, so, uh, story of the lighter. This is just, a, it, it illustrates a principle. So we were on Black Friday. Is that scary? <laughs> yeah, it's the day after Thanksgiving. It is scary. People uh, go shopping downtown uh, in, in the millions to return all the, no, to buy stuff for Christmas, whatever it is. They do that after Christmas. They give back all the junk. <laughs> but the day after Thanksgiving, everybody goes downtown and they're trying to get deals and they're just crowded like anything. So we have a downtown San Francisco, the Harinam party is lined up, chanting nicely. We have these beautiful yellow Bhagavad Gita's. You can see that we're distributing the people up and down the street. So this young um, hippie couple, yes, they're still our hippies. If you go to San Francisco, you can see some <laughs> hippie couple walking down the street. And um, they were mesmerized by the Harinam party, so I stepped over to introduce them to the Bhagavad Gita. And right there in the middle of the crowd, just like any good hippie would do, they sat down on the sidewalk <laughs> to look at the book. They were so absorbed in appreciating it. And I was appreciating them, appreciating the book, and people were walking around us, and there we are in this little bubble. And then uh, I told them about the donation, just like I told you now. And they really tried hard. They looked in every pocket. They couldn't find anything except the cigarette lighter. And the guy halfway pulled it out, black Bic cigarette, cigarette lighter. And he goes, oh, you don't want this? And I said, yes, I do. <laughs> and I could see that he, he was kind of offering it to me, but hoping that I wouldn't take it. It's because he said, well, you don't want this, right? And I go, yeah, I do. And, and so like the momentum was already there. I took the cigarette lighter. And that was a big sacrifice for him. And the reason I know is because about an hour later, I was standing there, and some of his friends came over and they said, uh, you still got the cigarette lighter? Because we kind of need it right now. 
And I won't go into details why they need it. But what I did with it was, I took it home. I cleaned it more than I've cleaned anything else in my life. And I put it with my puja paraphernalia. So in the morning when we worship the deities, I take that cigarette lighter. And for my worship of, of Giriraj and Shalagram, I light the lamp. And I was just thinking of those people that now that every time I light the lamp and I offer it to the deity, they're getting this, this benefit. And this is the mood of Sankirtan. We take, we're, we're meant, it's a loving exchange. We're meant to engage people in innovative ways so they can come closer to Krishna. It's not about the money. We're not trying to make money on this. The money pours in. The more you're generous, the more you give it out to other people. You'll have so many, but you'll get tired of it. There's so much. That sounds like the President of the United States. But, but it's a fact. Hare <laughs> Krishna. Guru Mahaj, you're mentioning that how Krishna actually he contemplates that how will conditioned living entities actually enter Vrindavan. So one on one side we hear that how we read how Krishna is Atma Ram, he is completely satisfied. But does Krishna still have a desire that conditioned souls actually engage in the higher three rasas instead of the lower three? Is is that a more uh, pleasure? in Krishna. Like, does Krishna receive more pleasure if conditioned souls are actually engaged in the higher three rasas? Like, I was just thinking, like, why does Krishna contemplate that the living entities go to the higher rasas? <coughs> Whatever one's, whichever mellow is one's original, relationship, he considers that to be the highest. And it's not that, you see, Krishna wants different living entities to kind of, you know, become related to him in a certain way. Like, in, on the other hand, we can consider that actually it is the living entity's own swarup, his own constitutional position. Like, for example, those who are in Santaras and meditating, they think that's the highest. Right? To them, that's the highest. Mm. Those who are serving, they think that's the highest. It's not that they're thinking, oh, why I am in servitorship? I should at least become a friendship. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's not the spiritual uh, mood. Like spiritual mood is whatever one's <coughs> relationship is, he is perfectly situated in that. But what actually Krishna considers is that I reveal my Braja Leela. Now how will anyone have access to Braja Leela? Right? The thing is because generally the devotional service is rendered in by, through Bhaiti Bhakti. There are four other Vaishnav Sampradayas, right? They have been there since time in memory. But they, their mood or their way is Vaidhi Bhakti. And their destination is Vaikuntha. So Vrindavan is actually unknown. Vrindavan was unknown. Now Krishna revealed the Braja Leela. But the consideration is, how will anyone understand the profundity of Braja Leela? Right? Some people thought, oh, this is one of Krishna's pastimes, the earthly pastimes. Some people even considered, oh, it's immoral. So we don't really want to delve into that. Hmm. But in order to make one understand the real purpose and objective of Braja Leela, Krishna came as Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Had he not have come, Jodi Gaura Nahuito, Tabiki Hoito, 
kemone dholitam dehe if gor shri chaitanya mahaprabhu did not come how would i have maintained my life and so prema radharo mohima prema rasho shima jagote janato ke then who would have revealed to this world the glory of radharani's loving relationship with krishna mm. so that is why he came he revealed this past time and now is the consideration of making people understand what it is actually like if you think that vaikuntha is the ultimate then vrindavan past times will appear to be like an just one of the earthly past times that krishna performs on the earth planet but by appearing as sri chaitanya mahaprabhu he pointed out this apparently earthly past times at the topmost region of the spiritual world and now you look at a reflection reflection the topmost appears to be bottom right therefore if you look at it like look at the reflection from this and point of view when you see the reflection of the region of the spiritual domain brahma jyoti that is appears from this perspective it appears to be the highest right and then vaikuntha is reflected as heavenly planet swarga lok and braja leela is reflected as the earthly pastimes right so if you go enter into the spiritual world the first is brahma jyoti then vaikuntha then vrindavan now in the reflection it is reflected like the apparently it seems that the demigods are in a higher position but if you look at it that's why as vaisheshika prabhu was pointing out human beings are very dear to krishna because you know they are they have the prerogative they have the the access or ability and eligibility to enter into braja leela so even the demigods if they have to enter into krishna's braja leela they have to come down to the earth planet as i mentioned like vaikuntha you cannot go from vaikuntha to vrindavan if anybody had to go to vrindavan from vaikuntha he has to come back to the earth planet and perform sankirtan and that is how he has access to vrindavan that has been pointed out in brihad bhagavatam gop kumar from dwarka he had to come back to vrindavan earthly vrindavan perform some kirtan and then he actually became eligible hmm. so that is how rare krishna's braja leela is and therefore krishna actually made this special arrangement for the human beings when they are apparently most degraded in the age of karni they have the access to vrindavan Man has been created according to the image of God. <laughs> the original form of the 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 actual form of the original supreme personality of Godhead is too harmed, like a human being. And with that image, he has created human beings. With his Vaikuntha form, forearm form, he created the demigods. <laughs> Hare Krishna is just like so much nectar. I was thinking like, what is our qualification that all these advanced Vaishnavas are here and are pouring nectar into our ears? So we are very, very grateful to all of you that you know we know that you have like so busy schedules, traveling all around the world, preaching the message of Sri Krishna and Krishna consciousness, and you have taken time to visit us and bless us with your association. So we are very, very grateful to all of you. I'm I'm just a servant but everyone is doing so much but we are we're very very fortunate so let's thank all of them and we request all of them
please visit us again whenever there's an opportunity. We are blessed by your association, so please do visit us again. Hari Drishta Prabhu didn't say anything. Let's see. Yes. <laughs> oh, I can say something. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. We're going to go on on Hari Nam on Saturday <laughs> in Hillsboro. And we invite anybody who wants to come along to tell us that you're going to come along so we know how many are coming. And uh, we'll be in front of Weaver Street Market at uh, noon, and we'll be there for a couple hours, maybe 11.30. Well, anyway, we'll, 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 we'll decide on the time. But um, we really want to um, spread Krishna consciousness, and we're very inspired by the uh, wonderful devotees who've come here and given us their uh, wonderful association so that we can be, feel more inspired to give Krishna consciousness to everyone we meet. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Like, uh, questions came, and uh, I answered, Vaisheshika Prabhu answered, and now I want to hear some of you asking a question to Mukunda Datta Prabhu. He gave such a brilliant class on that, brilliant class on the Holy Name. Yeah, take the Hare Krishna. Um, such transcendental uh, sharings were there that every one of us who is hearing here and online, we are all inspired to take up with full enthusiasm and heart. Uh, I'm speaking on behalf of all of us because I'm same person confident that we all would like to enter into a Golok Rindavan pastimes. So addressing the practical concern that uh, an obstacle on the path of spiritual advancement, um, as Srila Prabhupada writes in Bhagavad Gita chapter 15, uh, purport that is the weakness of our heart, which is caused by primarily two reasons. Uh, one is um, the tendency to lord it over material nature, and the other is the attachment um, to that matter. So what uh, would be a practical way, while we are engaged in devotional pra process, to overcome that weakness of heart. Thank you so much. Um, it was a great uh, evening, a memorable one for your wonderful association. Great stalwarts and thank you for inspiring us. Hare Krishna. Thank you. Hare Krishna. This is one of those questions that falls into the general category of how do I make advancement in Krishna consciousness? And the answer to any any of the any any of such questions is always the same. Sadhu Sangha. When you associate with devotees who are more advanced and whose whose faith is deeper than yours, because that's the definition of more advanced, and you get inspiration from them, as you were saying, and you get also practical directions from them then all the Nortas can be overcome very quickly. We know from Rupa Goswami's Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu, which itself practically is just a commentary on the third canto of the Srimad Bhagavatam, chapter 25, verse 25. Shradharatir Bhaktir Anukramishyati, all the way from a beginning and in initial stage of some faith that we may have, when we invest that in the process of sadhu sangha, then automatically all the ugly things within us, they are dissolved. Commensurate to the intensity of the association that we accept. And we become fixed in bhakti, and we get um, a, a real taste for bhakti, we become attached to that taste, and then it matures into bhava bhakti. And, and ultimately, we hope prema bhakti. This is the this is the process that's outlined. But 
everything actually begins with sadhu sangha because practicing bhakti yoga means bhajana kriya the activities of worshiping krishna that only happens in the association of devotees it comes from the association of devotees uh, Srila Prabhupada is a devotee, you see, so his books are there, he's given us the process, and it's nourished by that association as well. To the extent that we associate with devotees, to that extent we make advancement as much as we, wa- as much, as much as we want. Uh, someone even told me that Srila Prabhupada said, association is 90% of our advancement, but it, 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 it is logical. Um, our, so our, our advancement in any direction is dependent on our association. Even in the material world, the same principle is there. So by associating with devotees, we will be chanting, we will be hearing, we will be remembering, we will be serving, we will be offering prayers, etc., etc., etc. So all, all shortcomings can be, can be eradicated just by accepting stronger association. Sajati Ashaya Snigta. We should become attached to somebody who's like us, but whose faith is deeper than us. If, if, you, if you cannot find association of someone who is similar to you, then you may not be able to relate, and it may be hard to take advantage of the process. But if you only associate with someone who's similar to you, but doesn't have deeper faith than yours, then there's no point. So it, it has to be both of those things at the same time. This is Rupa Goswami's advice in Bhakti Rasamrit Sindhu. So that's one thing, and then as we were saying earlier, the, the main thing is chanting. If we chant, the more we chant, these things become plans. Hearing and chanting, there it's like we're saying both have to go on. All the activities of Bhakti, all sixty four of them actually, they're they're affected through Sadhu Sangha. So Sadhu Sangha, Sadhu Sangha, Sarva Shastra Kway Lava matra sadhu sangha sarva siddhi hoy. Sarva siddhi. Every perfection is available. No matter what it is, through association with a pure devotee, especially. Okay? It's really very nice to listen to uh, your lecture, your kirtan, as always. And your answer to the specific question. And from this answer, I have a question, a little one. Um, we were like, uh, when we sta- start initially Krishna consciousness, then we know about Krishna consciousness and we get attracted so much and we f- feel like, oh, offering a boga to Krishna is so wonderful, chanting is so nice, going to temple is so wonderful. And then we start going more and more and more and start offering and ac- accepting this knowledge and then what happens at a point of time like Vaisheshika Prabhu always says like Krishna take over all of your life and then gradually devotional service increases you get go to more sadhu sangha and then you inspire get inspired to read more books and in that time then sometimes I personally realize that before I used to like offer every glass of milk my son was asking me to drink and now I have started offered tulsi leaf putting in the glass and giving it to my son thinking that okay it's now offered because I added an offer tulsi leaf because I have to make some sweets for this program and something somewhere to go and something like in the process so more and more and more sadhu sangha brings more and more and more devotional service and then I think like end of the day I am becoming more Krishna conscious or I am diluting myself so is there anything we can do about it? That's a very long question. (laughs) In fact it's so long that I'm not sure what the question is. (laughs) Maybe if you say it very simply I can repeat. Oh, I see, I see. Okay, it's a practical question. Well, um, one thing we can do is just offer enough milk. 
Because Krishna, Krishna can eat unlimited amounts, especially either Jagannath or Giridaj. These are the two eaters. <laughs> so, I mean, that's a simple question, so that's a simple answer. <laughs> Is that okay, or are you wondering about... That was one example, though. One example, okay. I hope you're not just putting a Tulsi leaf in your bead bag. <laughs> That's dangerous that we have to walk out, watch out for because then it becomes nama parav, no? We have to understand that we're inviting Krishna into our heart, or at least into our ears, hopefully all the way into the heart, and we have to be attentive. That's the very, very important thing. Inattention is, is the, basically the source of all of the other offenses. Uh, what you're talking about is more like distraction, but it's, it's a subcategory. This is why I said earlier that all the different things that we do in Krishna consciousness, they're really only meant to bring us to the stage of pure chanting. Because although it's very, very simple, it's also very hard for us. We're very conditioned in so many non-devotional ways, you see. So it's a very good thing uh, if we recite these ten offenses to the holy name every morning. Otherwise, how do we remain conscious? And, and aware that we need to work on these things. So, uh, same as with his question, if, if we keep stronger association, they can help us, inspire us, they can guide us, they can correct us as need be. Um, it takes some time, so we have to be a little patient. But uh, keeping good association and making a, making a conscious effort to weed out these kinds of anarthas is, is very important. Although we develop all good qualities just by engaging in devotional service, the essence of it is chanting in this yuga, and the chanting has to be performed very carefully. You, you want to add something? Something to add, any either of you? Is that okay? If anybody has any question, you have to tell who the question is directed to. Anyone can answer. Uh, when chanting is, is it okay uh, to think about the pastimes or we should just hear the vibration of the sound? What is, what does the scripture and Acharya say about that? Well, since Mukunda Dattu Prabhu is asked, that is the topic he is discussing, you would like to hear. This is Hare Krishna. This is a very important question. It's a question that comes up from time to time, and it's a question that Srila Prabhupada dealt with. In Chaitanya Charitamrita and in other places, Srila Prabhupada has very clearly said that we should, at least in the beginning, we should just hear without trying to artificially focus the mind on anything else, even a picture of Krishna. Or people do so many things to try to artificially fix their minds. But the holy name is what does everything. And when we give sufficient attention and, and focus to the holy name, then the nature of the holy name changes, or our perception, rather, of the holy name changes. And we realize that the Holy Name is what we were trying to concentrate on all along. Because the Holy Name is the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Really all we have to do is treat Him that way. And then He reveals Himself. Swaya meva spurati. So, we should hear very carefully. We should chant loud enough that we can hear. And maybe not so loud that we disturb everyone around us. <laughs> But, you know, and distinctly, we should try to pronounce the mantra every syllable. It's, it's very important to hear. And that's the, that's the main focus. Is that okay? Hare Krishna.
Vaisheshika Prabhu spoke about Srimad Bhagavatam and the book that I wrote, Ocean of Mercy. But Vaisheshika Prabhu didn't mention about his book. So how many of you have... Okay, let's approach it in this, in this way. How many of you have joined the family of ISKCON? Those who have joined, please raise your hands. Okay, so those who have joined ISKCON family, do you want to know what's your family business? So how many of you know your family business? How many of you don't know what's your family business? So everyone knows. Now, do you want to reconfirm your commitment to your family business? Yes. Okay. So read by Vaisheshika Prabhu's Our Family Business. How many of you have this book? <laughs> How many of you don't have this book? How many of you think that this book should be given to somebody else? And how many of you want this book particularly signed by Vaisheshika Prabhu? <laughs> so, those who want, please take this book. It's a brilliant book. It's the most wonderful book. Please read it. Take it. If you have read it, you know what it is. And you have realized the importance of giving this book to others, those who are actually aspiring for Krishna consciousness. Please give this book to them as well. Thank you very much. Hey,